This is the most beautiful watch I've ever reviewed. And I'm not saying this hyperbolically, I mean it. This is the most beautiful watch I've ever had in. The perfect use of color with the dark green and the yellow gold, the flatness of the watch and how perfectly it hugs the wrist, the ridiculously beautiful movement with the Geneva seal hidden beneath an officer's case back, even the strap and how perfect it is for this watch. This is the most delightful watch I've ever had in. But I know not many people are gonna click this video and there's a couple reasons for this. One, it isn't a stainless steel sports watch. Those do quite well on YouTube. And two, because of the name on the dial, Chopar. So this is really just a passion project for me because I love this brand. I love Chopar. I find them especially fascinating and I can't figure out why no one is talking about them. If you're new here, Hi, my name is Brittany, and on this channel, we just talk about watches in a hopefully not pretentious and joyful way. Today, we have in the Chopar LUC XPS 1860 Officer, and I have this watch on loan from my gorgeous, fabulous friend Julian at Hands and Cogs on Instagram. Julian and I have been friends for a while now. We first met at a red bar when one of us was nursing a monster hangover. I won't say which one of us it was. So thank you so much, Julian. So there's this question that watch geeks ask each other from time to time. If you could rearrange the holy trinity of watchmaking, that is Patek Philippe, uh, Audemars Piguet, and Vacheron Constantin, who would you add in or take out? There are some common ones that people throw into the mix, Along and Sona, Jeuge Le Coup, but I've never heard anyone suggest Chopar, when really they're one of the strongest options. The Maison was founded in 1860 by Louis Ulysses Chopard in the Swiss Jura. Chopard made watches and jewelry for royalty, namely Tsar Nicholas II of Russia. They were one of the few manufacturers that didn't fall during the court's crisis of the 70s and 80s, and have created some of the most outstanding movements like the Calibre 196. Okay, whatever, the 1.96 is a bit of a recent development in horology years, developed in 1996, but still, this is possibly the best automatic movement ever made. I was reading an article about this one in Reescapement, and this is no light claim. It says, the list of automatic movements that might seriously lay claim to the title of best automatic movement ever produced is short. Ask around and you might get answers like Patek Philippe 27460, the JLC Calibre 920, adopted by Audemars Piguet, Patek and others. But one credible answer comes from a manufacturer that might surprise some, the Chopar LUC Calibre 1.96. Chrono24 makes an even bolder claim. So this is from an article from 2021 titled The Chopar LUC 1.96, the best automatic caliber to enter series production. I won't bore you guys by talking about movements that I find fascinating all day long, but the TLDR version is. The Calibre 1.96 was an extremely flat and thin movement measuring at only 3.33 millimeters, powered by a guilloche gold micro rotor. It has a breguet overcoil hairspring, swan neck regulator, hand finished with Geneva stripes. Extra fun fact about the 196 is back in 1995, a young Jean-Frédéric Dufour, now the CEO of Rolex, was charged with organizing this new in-house caliber. Put that in the back pocket in case some random unnamed watch YouTuber puts that on a YouTube community quiz. Looking specifically at Julian's watch now, this is the LUC XPS 1860 Officer, first debuted at Watches in Wonders 2022 and is limited to only 50 pieces. This watch has a case diameter of 40 millimeters and a thickness of only 7.2 mil. He has the 18 karat yellow, gold, and green variation with the hand-applied honeycomb dial and case back, finished to perfection. On the wrist, the 40 millimeters is a little bit too large on me, as are all the watches that I love, but it looks perfect on my husband's six and a half, but he keeps saying it's six and three quarters inch wrist. The dial is phenomenal, but it's when we turn this watch around that the party really gets started. So if you push the button at the crown, it opens the hunter or officer's case back to show the LUC 9601L self-winding movement. Before we talk about the movement, I just want to say how fun the officer's case back is and pushing the button. <laughs> 
I hate to admit how much I just like pushing buttons and find it so satisfying. And I, I love the niche world of this style of case back. It's the best of both worlds and I wish more timepieces came with this option. Okay, now the movement. Beautifully decorated, certified with the Geneva seal, this 9601 features Geneva waves on the bridges, circular grained main plate, and the 22 karat gold micro rotor. This movement provides 65 hours of power reserve thanks to the twin technology invented by Chopard that combines two coaxial barrels. And of course, because I love this watch so much, I already know it's nowhere near my price point. So you can find these on Chrono24 for 24,000 to 30,000 pound. So I'm priced out. But even though I can't afford it, it reminds me of why I love watches and timekeeping in the first place. This watch is the meeting place of art, history, fashion, and engineering. It just fills me with awe and wonder again, and it gets me excited about watchmaking. It's exactly my kind of watch. And this is gonna sound crazy because, well, this is a 30,000 pound watch. But for the level of watchmaking you're getting, the finishing, it's, it's kind of a really good value watch for how much watch you're getting. And all of this leads me to wonder, why aren't more people talking about Chopard? For the endless barrage of Rolex and Omega and stainless steel sports watch videos we all see on our YouTube homepage, how come we don't ever hear about this brand? They have all the markers of a winning brand. They've got the sporty Genta-esque model with the Alpine Eagle, the storied chronograph in the Mili Miglia, the iconic floating diamonds in the women's happy sport, and some serious high-end watchmaking in the LUC collection. Well, I've got three main reasons why I think Chopard is so undervalued. One, Chopard also sells jewelry, which makes some enthusiasts feel like they're not a serious watchmaking house. Two, their high-end movement making is relatively recent. And three, they need to up their marketing. So point one, and, and I don't know why enthusiasts are like this, if they're just so ultra masculine or what, oh, jewelry is just too feminine. <laughs> But as soon as a watch house or a watchmaker also does jewelry, they're kind of seen off by the watch enthusiast community. I will always think this is silly because watches and jewelry will forever be attached at the hip. The first watches ever made were gem set beautifully adorned wrist watches made for women of nobility. One could even argue that the tool watches worn by men today and the way men wear their watches today are largely worn as jewelry. Sure, there's a few exceptions, but the average watch wearer is wearing their watch as a piece of jewelry. Hence the widely known and used phrase, desk diver. I'm not saying I'm making that argument. I do still think watches serve a bit more of a purpose than necklace or a bracelet, because it does tell you the time. But I do think one could make that argument. The next reason why I think people write off Chopard is because their high-end movement making is relatively recent, which is true. But if you believe Along and Sona is producing Holy Trinity watchmaking, then you really can't write off Chopard either. In 1996, both Chopard and Along and Sona unveiled their in-house caliber movements. And three, Chopard need to up their marketing. Although I do think they are trying. Chopar came back into my zeitgeist when I was watching Apple TV's The Morning Show, where Jennifer Aniston's character wears the LUC Quattro Regulator and an Alpine Eagle. And I'm obsessed with her rose gold Alpine Eagle and I think about it every day. But although they have done some marketing and, and they're working towards it, there's still some work to do. Good grief, where am I going with this video? <laughs> All of this is to say, I think the watch community needs to talk about Chopar more. We need to appreciate movements like the Caliber 1.96, the movement found in this watch, and I think Chopar should sponsor me. I am cheap and relatively not effective. Okay, maybe don't go for me, but maybe go for Adrian Barker or Jenny L or something, because I want to see more of you. Anyways, I'll stop rambling now. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. And um, these are the Pope tier patrons who keep my channel going, the keep it afloat. Thank you so much, patrons. Show them love, show them love. Let's roll the outro song. Ooh, you didn't think the song would be done by me, but it is. Cause I need to thank my Pope to patrons. 
Mal Pope to Pope to Patreon.